So what have I done down here? You can see we've evaluated. Now, you might notice I've not even gotten the numbers, the final answer out the bottom. Because when you look at this, you can think, oh, without even evaluating the next line, this is clearly not zero, right? And that's the only number I'm searching for. You like, look, these negatives, they're huge. When you look at something like this, it's a little less obvious, but because you've only got two alternatives, um, you can go ahead and you can verify in your calculator, this is zero. Bless you, okay? Now, at this point here, what you could do is you could go to the factor theorem again to try and find the rest of the factors. That's what the factor theorem is for, after all. But there's a quicker and sneakier way we can do this, okay? We don't need to, right? Think about this. What we've found is that there's a double root at negative seven. So when we look at our original polynomial, right, I can rewrite it as, well, if something has a double root at negative seven, then what thing can I write in the factorization? Hold on, hold on. X plus seven, like this guy, right? X plus seven, and it has to be squared. That's what makes it a double root, okay? And then there's gonna be something else hanging on the end. Okay, now I don't know what that is yet. I have some very good guesses, but I don't want to just guess and then see what happens. So because I don't know what it is yet, I'm just going to call it alpha, where the other root is alpha. Okay, now watch this. This is so charming. It's just really nice to see how it works, right? I know that my polynomial will eventually look like this once it's all done and dusted, right? But I already know before it's all factorized that it's equal to this, right? So what I can do is I can just choose a convenient value of x. This requires a little bit of creativity. I can choose a convenient value of x to put into here that makes alpha easy to see, right? Now, essentially what I want to do is just get alpha by itself, right? That would be nice and then I can solve this whole thing. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to let x equal zero. If I let x equal zero, then over here in that little set of brackets, all you get is just the well, minus and the alpha all by itself. Okay? So watch what happens. I'm going to let x equal zero, so I get p of zero equals what? What's going to start writing on the right-hand side? Negative Have a look. Hold on. I've got, to, I've got to put zero everywhere I saw x before, right? So I've got zero plus seven. I'm just going to do the substitution step. Squared. And then I've got... Zero minus alpha. alpha, very good. But from the very first line, I know what p of x is, and if I put in p of zero into here, what happens to all of these terms? They all vanish, right? Zero cubed, zero. Uh, zero squared, zero, etc. All you get left with is this guy in the end here, right? So I'm going to have negative 245. Is that okay? That's what happened when I substituted zero in. What's this equal to? 49. And then, of course, you've just got negative alpha here, right? Is that all right? And now you can see, if all I want is alpha, what should I divide both sides by? Uh, yeah, probably the negative as well. And when you divide that by a negative 49, surprise, surprise, you get 5. No long division required. Yeah? So couldn't we from the beginning say that a plus 7 to the power of 2 would give us a four, um, uh, 49 at the end? Uh, you're, yeah, get a 49 here. Yeah. Yep. And the only number that we have in the original yep. function is 245. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So what Rasmus is suggesting is sort of slotting in at this line here and saying you'd get x squared. What would be the rest of that when you expand the x plus 7 all squared? Plus 14x. 14x. Plus 49, which is true. And then you've got the x minus alpha still hanging on there. So what you can say is, I can, what we call this is comparing coefficients. So if I compare the constant coefficient over here, which is negative 245, it must be equal to the constant coefficient over here, which would be negative 49 alpha. But that's exactly what I end up with here. So essentially, yes, we can, but because that's the same thing that we've got here. All right? So as my final line, I can say, therefore is, because alpha is not what I was searching for, my original question was factorize, right? So I can finish the factorization. I had most of it there, didn't I? X plus seven all squared, and then X minus, X minus five. five. Done skis. So it takes a bit more thinking, but actually much less working if you end up cleverly using some of your facts about calculus and double roots. Okay.
Does anyone have any questions on this? Were there any points at which you're like, uh, no, I, I missed the leap of logic and it was a bit confusing?